and it Hello and welcome to Elite Tech News. My name is Nathaniel Schooler and I have a really interesting episode here for you. This was recorded with nextlevelpodcast.com and is a preview of the hour-long interview that we did with Michael Tobin, OBE, technology entrepreneur extraordinaire. Hey there, Mike. It's uh, great to have you with me on a podcast again. And today we are at the... The Arts Club. The Arts Club. In Dover Street. In the smoking room, but I don't smoke. It's just... <laughs> Nor do I. It's just uh, nice and quiet here. So. Well, well, relatively so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so today we're going to talk a bit about uh, sales and success secrets to help you scale up your startup. Okay. And I've got a few questions. So... First one is, how do people stay focused on that one idea business role? Yeah, I think I think this um, this kind of goes down to the the, the concept of um, appreciating that failure is actually a step on the way to success, um, and and that's where the focus comes in. And and a lovely chap um, who basically taught me how to sell when I was in my very early 20s um, it was actually Brian Adams's cousin the singer um, uh, his name's Ian but uh, he so he he, tell, he he sort of explained this to me and, and uh, it's a great great lesson for everyone so if, if you imagine you're a you're a, a broom salesperson right and you can go back in your statistics and work out that you know out of every every hundred houses 95 houses already have a broom um, three of the houses want a broom but yours is too expensive and two of them you know would really like those and, but actually yours is the wrong color but one of them says you know what that's fantastic it's exactly what I want and you get it now that means statistically you know in advance that you're gonna know in advance that you're gonna sell one broom every hundred houses so when you knock on a house door and they slam the door in front of you you should be rejoicing because you're one step closer to your sale right now if you can apply that principle to the inevitable ups and downs of a startup business then you know you're gonna get those it's, it's unnatural to assume everything's gonna go swimmingly every day that is just nonsense so actually everything that you you fail at call it lessons right so you say I'm gonna succeed or I'm gonna learn and you remove that failure element from your from your view then actually you can see a direct path to success through all the things that you would have normally said were failures and that's a really important point for anyone starting anything and basically for life too yeah that that resonated with the audience that the last time you talked about that it, when we spoke mm. so many people said because i know a lot of people that are involved with startups like yeah. quite a lot of my audience the more engaged people seem to be those people and yeah and they they, they absolutely they absolutely well, loved it but well funny th funny thing in life right there aren't that many any many lessons to learn <laughs> right it's like communicate well engage with people you, any anybody doing anything in terms of a business startup or selling anything all they're doing actually is selling themselves they're selling confidence Right? They're engaging with people and building a trust. If you think about who's going to win and who's going to lose in the future, and I was actually I was talking to my my 17 year old daughter um, yesterday about this. She was saying, "Look, you know, uh, I'd really like to be, I'd like to be an artist." I said, "Well, um, you know, that that's cool, um, but you're incredibly bright. I mean, you know, but if you want to do art, that's fine. Um, you know, they're very intelligent artists as well." And she says, "And I said, well, let me just give you one piece of advice: focus on your skill set and not the career." Right? So if you focus on being an artist, you, you're very narrow. Mm -hmm. right? If you focus on being artistic, yeah. right, you could be a curator. Right? You, could be an interior, you could be an interior designer. Mm -hmm. You could be many things, yeah. right, which broadens your entire portfolio of opportunity, but uses this, exactly the same skill set. Mm -hmm. So in th instead of thinking about a, a specific career think about a specific skill set you open up the uh, the opportunity portfolio and I think this is again when, you, when you're looking at um, business in development you know you, you probably want to think about what you know what do you have to do there? you have to engage with people you've got to sell confidence right people will buy you and then they'll buy whatever you are telling them to buy because they trust you and by the way it breaks as quickly as it's made or much quicker than it's made Right, because you try and sell someone they don't actually need, then that will come off the wrong way as well. So, you know, this is about engaging with people and making sure that that they have confidence in you. You're almost being a curator. People go to Amazon, right? Because and they look at that and they say, people like you 
or people that bought people that bought the same things as you have also bought this, right? And we look at that and we go, ah, oh. you know, because we're set. They were desperately searching for curation, desperately searching for curation. Yeah, that's massive. It's absolutely massive. The use of data with that, it's, it's, it's crazy. We'll we'll uh, we'll have a little chat about that in a minute <laughs> about data. But um, so so. A lot of people that I speak to, certainly in the startup business, yeah. and also people who aren't used to technology, really, kind of more the old school generation, even even you know even sort of people in their early forties, mid thirties, they get distracted massively. Yeah. So so how how do they stay focused on that one idea that is or one task that is going to just get them to the next level? Well, you know, the funny thing is these days that the rate of change of change is getting faster, right? So maybe having the necessarily the most thing, the single objective, is not necessarily the most important thing. Maybe the focus should be on uh, drive and energy, and just say that every day, you know, you wake up and you say, "What am I going to do today that moves me forward?" Right? Yeah. And that the direction might change, right? But as long as every day you get up with that objective. Then you're going to improve, and I think you know. Again, it's it's a little bit like I was saying. You know, rather than focusing on the end result of being an artist, you know, focus on the the talents talents that you need to have. So, in the the most important talents you need to build a business, right? Yeah. Tenacity. Yeah. You know, never give up. <laughs> yeah. Resilience, stamina. You know, take the knocks. Yeah. Yeah, all yeah. those things, right? But engage with people. And and the other thing about it is little tricks like you know people always say it's really hard to get funding for small businesses. Mm -hmm. That's not the case, right. right? But you know when I when I when I there's a there's this tiny little um, key cutters down by Cannon Street Tube mm -hmm. Station in London, and I always go past. When I walk past in in the sunshine, right? I see it as a key cutter. When I walk past in the rain, yeah. All these umbrellas are wheeled out into the street. Oh, right? nice. Now they're always inside, but yeah, yeah. when it's raining, of course, they sell them outside. And one, one thing I noticed, right, mm -hmm. was that when they wheeled them outside, these yeah. one pound fifty throwaway umbrellas are now ten pounds, <laughs> right? because it's a supply and demand thing. Of course. But of course, banks are just like this. Banks are umbrella salespeople, right? right? So right. if you go to a bank wanting yeah. money when you need money, yeah. right? Yeah. They're naturally going to be a little bit more let's say rigorous mm -hmm. and more sort of suspicious in the yep. way that they engage with you yep. but if you go to a bank before you need money yep. right, and you say hey look guys I'm just going to tell you what I do mm -hmm. and they'll say what do you want you say nothing I don't want anything thanks very yep. much I'm going to tell you what I do yep. and I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do yep. and then in six months I'm going to come back and tell you how I did <laughs> and if you do this again and again after mm -hmm. two or three visits the bank goes here yeah, yeah, yeah. right and suddenly the, the shoe's on the other foot mm -hmm. Right? Now we're talking because now the bank wants to engage with you. Suddenly you've knocked 200 basis points off your, off your finance package. Right. Okay? Right. And so you're now going and buying the umbrella when it's sunny. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? It, it's supply and demand. Supply and demand. But yeah. you're engaging, you're, you're committing that trust thing mm -hmm. in the sunshine and yeah. you're effectively you're buying your umbrella. But you're saying, you leave it for now and I'll come and pick it up when it rains. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay? Yeah. That but makes 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 a lot of sense for sure. It's uh, it's a bit like girls, right? <laughs> if you, you know, before before I found a found a girlfriend, it's like if you if you look at them, you kind of you kind of got to just sort of look away and w wait for them to come to you, right? <laughs> well, I mean, it, there's the yes, there's the, always the the flattery element as well, but. but um, well, I, I must admit, I was talking to um, a couple of my good friends at Blipper the other day, and, and obviously they have some very high, um, high um, highly developed um, facial recognition technology, oh, which yeah. is linked into um, into Wikipedia and all these sorts mm -hmm. of things. But ultimately, their objective is to put on a on a contact lens, uh, essentially um, artificial intelligence, augmented reality, if you like, on a contact lens. On a contact lens. So, yeah. so basically, you could go into a, a club and mm -hmm. you'd look at a. Um, a, a guy or a girl that you were attracted to and, yeah. and immediately beside them you'd be able to see whether they were single or oh. what their favourite things are and, and you know it's saying and, and by the way she likes green eyes and I've just turned your eyes green so you know that's Whoa. the sort of thing that you could do yeah. um, and I'm sure that uh, there'll be defence mechanisms on the other side for that as well but uh, you know that's, that's, um, that's the way technology is going yeah. And I'm sure that some people would go, that's awful, how terrible would that be for a technology to be able to do that? But, and, and as we were just saying before we were online, I think the, uh, the problem is you can't uninvent technology. No. Um, so if it's out there, people are going to use it. And, um, you know, you can't put this.
and um, you know you can't put the toothpaste back in the tube. Yeah, it's uh, it, could, it could be it could be quite a big problem I think for some people. But but it's like back to Google. Like mm. before people even have a meeting with you, they Google you, right? Yep. And like it goes for dating as well. Like Garen, my business partner, in profile Jetpack. He's always he's always talking about dating, like how you know girls they'll just Google you before they go out on a date with you. Well, I I just saw a statistic um, a few weeks ago that said that I think 40% of all marriages in the US now uh, derive from online dating. Wow. 40%. It's all a bit. It's all a bit in the time suck, really. Like, I mean, I went on Tinder. Like, when I went after I left my wife, I went on Tinder, and it just took up so much time. It was just. But there was. The, I was reading something the other day about this girl. She'd hacked Tinder. She she came up with this fantastic idea. So she basically liked every guy that popped up in her feed, and she had adapted her picture to say "catch of the day" on it, and she, <laughs> she did really well with it. But uh, yeah. that's funny. Well, it, well, in in the five minutes we've been going so far, there's probably been about two and a half million swipes on Tinder. So uh, yeah. that's that's how many go on every single day. So. Yeah, yeah. So you're a big believer, I know, in taking strat- sorry taking action without strategy. Can you can you, can you expand on that? Yeah, that's probably putting me in a really uh, tough spot. But um, <laughs> But so, no, what's from, no, of course. So, so from my book, um, Forget Strategy, Get Results, I guess you're deriving that. Yeah, yeah. But, and um, so it's slightly tongue in cheek because what, I, what I'm kind of portraying in that is that strategy is less important than taking action per se. And um, you can write, I mean, back in the day, if you go back 10, 15 years, we used to write five-year business plans. Right. And nobody writes a five-year business plan and has any expectation that it's going to go beyond a year. Oh, right. Right, okay. because basically things change so fast mm-hmm. around us, right? Mm-hmm. And, you know, uh, when, 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 when Uber becomes uh, a verb, mm-hmm. you know, to Uber something, you yeah. know, and you know, you're kind of saying that even Uber's going to be Ubered, you know, and you sort of go to a different level. And, and writing the strategy is not as important mm-hmm. as actioning. And we spoke um, uh, earlier on about um, the fact that Microsoft have already announced that there's going to be no more new versions of software. Yeah, yeah. They're only going to update, mm-hmm. right? So actually getting something out there, imperfect as it may be, yeah. and then tweaking it constantly is the right way forward. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. So rather than a strategy, I would use the word vision. I would mm-hmm. say, there's my vision. My vision is I want to be famous yeah. for this. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And everything I do every day, from the moment I wake up, in yeah. a, a business sense, is mm-hmm. that to, to focus on delivering my vision. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Now I don't know how I'm going to do it, but it's going to happen. Okay. Now, if you think about going on holiday. Yeah. Um, you know, if you if you've got your holiday booked. Mm-hmm. Um, you probably know which, you might know which resort you're going to, which yep. country it is, yep. right? But you probably don't know what, what color the BA flight or what, which, you know, what color the plane is going to be. And you probably certain, you don't know what color the taxi is going to be when you, when you take the taxi to the airport. Right. And you probably don't know what route he's going to take. You might have a reasonable idea, but you won't know what route it is. And by the way, if there's a roadblock on the road, it doesn't mean to say your, your holiday is finished. He'll yep. just take a detour and he'll get there in time. And you'll plan a few extra minutes early just in case that happens. Thanks so much for listening. If you want to tune in in a few days time, we will be bringing you the next in this three part series before the podcast goes live on nextlevelpodcast.com. So please subscribe to the email list.